my people what's good welcome back to the channel welcome to patala fc enzo fernandez at chelsea here we go long awaited an analysis slash apology to enzo fernandez so enzo fernandez broke onto the scene at the 2022 world cup first time it was played in november to december from the 21st of november to the 18th of december Enzo Fernandez scored a brilliant goal, finesse shot into the top corner, won young player of the tournament and won the World Cup. I said it last time I was on it, he's the best football player in the world. <laughs> I don't know why people, why he's laughing for, what, Chris, why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing for? I'm being serious, I'm being serious. <laughs> Through the World Cup, from the moment that he scored that finesse shot into the top corner, Enzo Fernandez's name was everywhere in terms of European football. He was going to get the big move. It was just about who would secure this player. Benfica were ready for the value-added tax, the tournament tax, <laughs> and they applied it accordingly. And Chelsea signed the player for $106.8 million, agreed to be paid in a structured format, divided over a period of time. Enzo Fernandez arrived in a time where Chelsea needed a creative spark Chelsea fans were craving a creative player and based on his profile, we believed he would be the player that would be the playmaker we all desired. It was a torrid time at Chelsea, changes on the pitch, changes off the pitch, owners starting to understand what they really want, studying the club, getting rid of certain managerial stuff and getting new stuff in. So the vision was changing and Enzo Fernandez got to play with too many players and he had to play under four different managers up till this point. Enzo Fernandez arrived February 1st of 2023, confirmed by the Chelsea website or the Chelsea page. Thereafter, two days later, he was starting a game against Fulham. Starting the game alongside midfielders like Mason Mount, Loftus Cheek, Kovacic was still there, Golo Kante was injured at the time. Enzo Fernandez was deployed as a high playing eight. He had to move forward now, an attacking eight. When at Benfica, he was a deep line playmaker. So the demands were already quite heavy for a player moving from Portugal to England, just turned 22. It was hectic on Enzo Fernandes, I believe. Before he knew it, he was no longer playing under Graham Potter. His last game under Graham Potter was against Aston Villa. The midfield was changing, formations were changing. Joao Felix arrived. Mujic was in that squad as well. Cugrela was also part of that system. Enzo Fernandez has gone through a lot. Last game under Graham Potter was against Villa, a loss at Stamford Bridge to Villa. Following game was Bruno Sauter, a one game spell for Bruno Sauter where Enzo Fernandez started against Liverpool at Anfield. And it was a nil nil draw, positive game, quite interesting formation from Bruno Sauter if we think about it. And it's a system that I think we could have actually thrived with if we tried it out. Very interesting formation. Soon after that, Frank Lampard was back at Chelsea as interim manager and the first game against Wolves, a 1-0 defeat at Molyneux, Enzo Fernandez was in a different system again. In every system, the demands were different from what he played at Benfica. Move forward more, do look for the pass over the top, he started to become that creative 10 behind Felix a bit more, behind Havertz a bit more, but it was never truly Enzo Fernandez's game since he arrived at Chelsea. Before he knew it, Lampard was also gone come the end of the season in a 1-1 draw against Newcastle. The last few games, a bit of form was being picked up by Chelsea. But Enzo Fernandez was still not playing in his preferred role, doing a job that he's comfortable with. For Argentina, we all know that Enzo Fernandez plays a typical eight role. He doesn't need to look for balls over the top. It's about keeping possession, keeping the team in control of the game, aiming for 600, 700 passes, which Enzo is now doing under the other Enzo, Enzo Maresca. It's been a very torrid time for Enzo, I believe, since he arrived at Chelsea. And of course, last season under Mauricio Pochettino, he got his first full season with a bit of consistency. When we look at midfield partners of Enzo Fernandez, it's been tricky until the arrival of Moise Caicedo. Everyone else was tricky. Loftus Cheek was his partner at some point. N'Golo Kante in and out of injury. Mateo Kovacic now and then, sometimes having even to play with Mason Mount. So 
In terms of a consistent partner, Moise Caicedo has brought the best out of Enzo Fernandez as well, and he deserves a shout out. But Enzo is finally finding himself at Chelsea and giving us exactly what we desire as fans, which is control in the game. Control and the right passes and being press proven. He was very bad when he was pressed in the first season, second season as well. He made mistakes under Pochettino. But ever since the partnership and the pivot came about next to Caicedo, it's been better. Gallagher was played in the 10 role in, under Mauricio Pochettino. Not everyone liked that. Sometimes we even hoped that Enzo would now be in the 10 and then Gallagher's defensive duties would come out more. But Enzo Fernandez is actually better in the deep line positions because he thrives more and he can drift more to the left of the pitch and act like a left wing back in terms of positional play. But we keep possession. He's brilliant in terms of those things. He can drive a bit, doesn't have pace for days, probably get a 60 pace rating on FIFA. But Enzo Fernandez is finally bringing out the best of him at Chelsea. And this is why it's an analysis slash apology. He is a typical eight. He's not going to get us 10, 15 goals a season. He might score a few brilliant free kicks, like the one against Villa last season. But Enzo Fernandez needs to be appreciated for the strength in, strengths in his game. Don't give him corner kicks, though. Literally, I, I was stuttering because I was thinking about the corner kicks and my brain just went fuzzy. But yes, Enzo Fernandez appreciation video. Let's get it, y'all.